Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Now we're going to be talking about tonight <clears throat> why confession works. Why does the confession of the Word of God work? Hebrews 11, verse 1, we'll read down three verses. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Father, we thank You for the anointing upon Your Word, and we proclaim that it shall have free course in this place tonight, and it will minister to every person under the sound of our voice, physically, financially, spiritually. It will be a blessing to their life. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now, in the, the Sunday night, we talked about the fact that uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. How did He do it? With the spoken word. He says, God said and God saw. God said and God saw. Every day God said, every day God saw that it was good. Till the last day, the sixth day, and He said it was very good. <laughs> well, we'll not get on that because I'll get sidetracked. But in John 1 1, says, in the beginning, uh, no. Didn't say in the beginning. John 1.1 1, 1 says the, the Word, well, it does, does say in the beginning. The beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And all things were made by Him. Him who? Him, the Word. Without Him, the Word, Jesus, was not anything made that was made. Jesus is the Creator of all things. He was the Word personified. Verse 14 says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So that brings it all together where our faith comes from. Our faith roots reach back to Jesus, the Word, which is equal with God. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word is still God over every situation today. So that's where faith comes from. It comes from God from His Word. Jesus was the personification of God's Word. So when in, in Hebrews, well, go there to Hebrews, the first chapter. We talked about this the other night, but I want to reiterate it. Verse 1, <clears throat> read down through verse 3. God, who in sundry times, divers manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by His Son, spoken to us by His Son, whom He hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also He made the world. How did He make the world? By His Son, His Word. His Word and God were one. He was with God in the beginning. By whom also he made the worlds, who being, talking about Jesus, or the Word, being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, Jesus was the express image of God's person. Now that's why Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Did you ever see Jesus make anybody sick? No. Then his Father didn't make anybody sick. Upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he by an inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now notice that it says, upholding all things by the word of his power. didn't say by the power of His Word. That could be iterated there, but Word of His power. He's telling you where His power is. It's in the Word. The Word created. 
There's creative power in the Word of God. Why? The DNA of God's in His Word. Everything starts from words. This building started from words. Somebody said, let's build a building. Somebody said, how big? They started naming numbers and writing down figures. Then pastor probably stood up with a blueprint, said, this is our new building. It wasn't a new building. It was a piece of paper with some lines drawn on it. But nobody accused him of lying, did they? Because if you follow that blueprint, the building is the result. It all started with words. Words. His creative power. So, he upholds all things by the word of his power. The universe today is in obedience to the Word of God. The reason the sun comes up at the same point on the horizon one year from today in the same spot is because God's Word is holding the universe in obedience to His Word. It's God's Word. Now, they, there was a, on the, and this is why it's important to understand this if you're going to understand why confession works. We're talking about confessing the Word of God, not talking about confessing our sins. Now, all some people know about is confessing your sins, because if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, but we're talking about a different area here. And, and when the, John was talking about that, he was, he was talking to Christians, wasn't talking to sinners. He said, I write unto you that you sin not, but if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin. But you see, in, in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, he said, hold fast the confession of your faith without wavering. Well, why would you have to hold fast to your confession? And, and the, word prof, it, the word is profession there, but it's the same word translated confession. Hold fast to your confession of faith. Well, now, why would you have to hold fast to it if there's not a possibility of losing it? So we must hold fast to the, our confession of faith on what we believe based on the authority of the Word of God. You don't wake up every morning feeling saved, probably. There may be some days that you wonder, you know. But we, our salvation is not based on how we feel. It's based on what the Word says and what we did concerning that. So um, the Word of God tells us that we hold fast to our confession of faith. Now, there's, there's several things that confessing the Word does. And I better, I better get over here. I've got it written in the back of my Bible because if I'm not careful, I, I'll get on those side trips and, and leave out something. But <clears throat> number one, confession of the Word of God sows a seed in the kingdom. Saying what God said is like planting a seed. Now, you have only but to read the parable of the sword, Mark 4, and Matthew 13, to find that out. The sower sows the Word. Well, who's the sower? The kingdom of God is if a man cast a seed into the ground. Well, how do you sow the Word of God? Luke 17, Jesus said, if you had faith as a seed, you would say. Now, you know, nobody would misunderstand that if you wrote it in the newspaper. But when you get in a <laughs> book that says Holy Bible, and people read that and wonder what he meant by that, it meant what he said. <laughs> you sow a seed, you reap a harvest. Jesus always took natural things and showed you how spiritual things work. And you know, in the religious world, for so many years, people wanted to totally separate the natural from the spiritual. Now, when you do that, you can't understand either one of them very well. Jesus never did do that. He grabbed natural things in one hand, so you how spiritual things work. It's called parables. Parallels, see. All truth runs parallel. So you sow a seed in the kingdom. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, Whosoever shall say. Now this is the words of Jesus. They're in red. 
You know, like I said last night, you get confused about the Bible, read the red and do what he said. Say to the mountain, you'll never hinder me again as long as I live. I can have what I say, and I'm saying, you're a thing of the past. Now, there's people say, bless God, you can catch me talking to the mountain. Ah, oh, yeah, you do too. But here's the way they talk to the mountain. Whoo, dear God, we're in debt. We'll be in debt the rest of our life. We'll never get over this. This mountain of debt, they're operating the principle in reverse. And they'll have what they say. So they're not confessing what the Word says. They're confessing the opposite of what the Word says. Now, Jesus, in the sixth chapter of Matthew, he said, Take no thought by saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Where shall we be clothed? Now, the Greek says, Take no anxious thought. Now, faith always stops at the question mark. I don't know whether you've noticed that or not. But I, I, I mentioned this in several services that uh, James said, If any lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth all men liberally, a breath not shall be given them. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth like a wave of the sea, driven of wind and tossed, let not that man think he'll receive anything of the Lord, for a dull minded man's unstable in all his ways. Faith stops at the question mark. So Jesus said, Take no thought by saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? Wherewith will we be clothed? That we'd say it today, Jesus would be saying, Take no thought by saying, What are we going to do? Gas going to $2 a gallon. In fact, aviation gas got up to, we paid $3 a gallon in, uh, somewhere a few months ago. What are we going to do? Don't take any thought by saying that because. You're questioning God's ability to supply the money needed for that. And faith will stop at the question mark. Now, I know some of you <laughs> think, where does he get all this stuff? Well, let me give you an example. In Mark, the first chapter, there was a leper came to Jesus, said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Now, here's a man that had no doubt. He was fully persuaded if Jesus would, he could make him clean. But he didn't know whether he would or not. Now, he had an excuse because there was no record at that time, as far as we have any record of, of any lepers being healed at that point. So he didn't know whether Jesus healed a leper or not. He didn't know whether Jesus lay hand on the leper or not. So he said, Lord, I know you can, just don't know whether you will or not. And see, there's a lot of people that way. They know God's able, but they don't know whether He will. Well, as long as you don't know, then there's no faith there. It's impossible to pray the prayer of faith if you don't know the will of God. How are you going to know the will of God? Get the Word in your mouth and quote it until it gets on the inside of you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. His Word is His will. He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them. So this leper said, I know you can, don't know whether he will or not. Jesus put forth his hand and touched the man. Now, why did Jesus do that? For the purpose of transferring the anointing that was on Jesus to the man and bring healing to his body. What happened? Nothing. Just like laying hands on a stone. No power flow. Then Jesus said, now notice, he put his hand on him first. Then he said, I will be thou clean. And Mark is the only one that records it this way. He caught it. He said, as soon as he had spoken, immediately, that's quicker than a New York minute. That's quick, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> immediately the leprosy departed from him. What happened? He answered the man's question. His faith stopped at the question mark. He was fully persuaded that he could, but he was not sure whether he would or not. So it drew no anointing. Jesus laid his hands on him. You find in all of Jesus' ministry, when he laid hands on people, if faith was present, they, I mean, some whole multitudes got healed. If they just touched Jesus or was even in the multitude, they got healed. 
But here the man lays his hand upon a leper for the purpose of transferring the anointing into him, and no power flowed. Why? Question mark. He's undecided. When Jesus answered his question, instantly the power of God flowed in him. It's impossible to pray the prayer of faith if you don't know the will of God. Bible faith only comes from the Bible. So how do you become fully persuaded? By quoting the Scripture. If it's healing, you quote Scriptures on healing. You, you study and meditate the Word. So you plant a seed in the kingdom. Uh, Luke 17 says, if you had faith as a seed, you would say to the mountain, I mean, say to the sycamine tree, be plucked up, be planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Didn't say to obey God, didn't say to pray to God about it. I was in a full gospel meeting back in the 70s, and this fellow got up after some of our teaching, you know, and he said, uh, well, you know what the Bible said, pray to God, and he'll move the mountain. I thought, where was he in this meeting? <laughs> no, he didn't say pray to God, and he'd move the mountain. He said, you speak to the mountain. Now, see, most Christians, though, because of a lack of knowledge or understanding, they're praying for God to do what He told them to do. You develop your faith by saying what God said in His Word. Now, this is the way you sow a seed in the kingdom. Jesus said, if you had faith as a seed, you would say. Now, we mentioned this last night. He said mustard seed. He used the word mustard because mustard is a plant that you can't hybrid. You cannot cross-pollinate mustard with any other plant. It will not take. It's going to be mustard. I don't care what you do with it. Now, my mother-in-law sent us a, several years ago, she sent us some <laughs> uh, peppers. They were uh, banana peppers. Boy, I love those things. And uh, I sat down to eat, and I grabbed one of those things, bit about half of it off, and man, I jumped up and run for the sink, spitting, and <laughs> my wife said, what in the world is going on? I said, that thing is hot. She said, it can't be. I said, but it is. It was planted beside some hot peppers. They cross-pollinated each other. But mustard is going to be mustard. It will not cross with anything else. So Jesus was saying, if you have faith that will not change under any circumstance, you would say, and it should obey you. Now, over the last 25, 30 years, I've experienced this and practiced it in, in everyday life, in business affairs, and I've had probably as much manifestation of uh, the anointing of God and... and uh, business affairs they ever had in spiritual things. And sometimes people think, oh, this only works in spiritual things. No. Every piece of property I bought in the last 25 years, I talked to it, called it to me in Jesus' name. You are mine. I call you mine. You will come to me in Jesus' name. Now, I, would, I wasn't talking to people that didn't want to sell the property or property they didn't want to sell. But uh, some of that property... I remember one instance, I talked to a piece of property, and 12 years later, it came to me. Well, Jesus knew what he was saying. If you had faith as a seed, you would say. Inanimate objects. He talked to a fig tree and it obeyed him. Now, why did Jesus talk to that fig tree? He's trying to show us that the Word works in any situation in life. He wasn't just mad at the fig tree, but, you know, so many people, they curse their own fig tree, you know. The disciples said, look at the fig tree which thou cursest, how it's withered away. Some people curse their own business. Well, nobody can make a living out of this business. We're going to go broke sure as the world. You're well on your way because in your mouth and in your heart. Number two, confession of the Word of God causes faith to come. It causes faith to come if you confess the Word. But people that confess the wrong things, it causes fear to come. Confession of the Word of God 
cause his faith to come. Paul said the word, Romans 10 says, the word is nigh you, is in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Number three, it renews the mind to the Word of God. Renew your mind to the Word. Romans chapter 12, the Apostle Paul said, don't be conformed to the world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Get your mind renewed to the Word of God. If you say what God says long enough, you'll, you'll eventually believe it. Now, I know I confess the Word of God for for weeks and months, and I didn't believe what I was saying was true in me. I knew it was true because it was in the Bible, but that's a mental ascent. It had to become true in me. I had to become fully persuaded. Now, back to Matthew, the sixth chapter, where Jesus said, Take no thought by saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewith shall we be clothed? Now, he tells you a secret there. You take thought by saying. You take thought by saying. Now, thoughts will pass, all kinds of thoughts pass through your mind during a day's time. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. But you don't have to take them. You know, sometimes somebody would like to run you off the road, you want to give them a piece of your mind and, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but that thought will run through your mind but don't take it. See, those thoughts will die unborn if you don't speak them. That's why Jesus said, take no thought by saying. Every word Jesus used had a meaning to it. Don't take thought by saying. Now, the Scripture says Jesus was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. Now, I know people that'll tell you, well, Jesus never had a bad thought. Hey, if you ever had one, he did. He just didn't take them. Now, if words mean anything, he was tempted in every point, like as you are, without sin. Any temptation you've had, he had, in, in some manner. But he just didn't take it. Well, what do you do? Instead of taking thought by saying, what are we going to do? Gas going $2 a gallon or, uh, you know, used to be interest rates going sky high. <laughs> uh, I can remember I bought a piece of property in Odessa, Texas back in the 70s, paying 6% interest. And a few years later, five years later, interest went to 21%. <laughs> Pretty good difference than what it is now, isn't it? I mean, you could get 20% in the bank for your savings account. Now, if you can get three quarters of a percent, you've done good. Take no thought but say. Don't say, I don't know what I'm going to do. I say, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to give, and it'll be given unto me. The same God that supplied the, the money for the dollar gas will supply the three dollars for the three dollar gas. <laughs> because I've given, it's given unto me, and my God supplieth all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I'm going to take that thought. Now, when you get that thought on the inside of you, and it becomes a part of you. Remember, Jesus said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. Ask what you will, say what you will. Pray what you will, it shall be done. Now, you have to take several scriptures to get that, but it's in there. Well, that just sounds too easy. No, it's not as easy as it sounds, but it works. Just read the red and do what he said. <laughs> you know, Jesus said in Luke 6, 6, he said, He that cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I'll show you who he's like. He's like a man that dig deep, laid the, uh, built a house. He dig deep, laid the foundation on the rock. When the stream uh, uh, beat vehemently against it, could not shake it. Now, we've talked about faith. We've talked about confession. We've talked about calling things that are not as though they were. We have a four-tape series 
that's called Why Confession Worked. Now, you know, I, I've, I've come to understand from reading the scriptures that if where a question mark is, your faith stops right there. Faith always stops at the question mark. That's why you need to know why you, you're confessing the Word of God, because if you don't know why, somebody will talk you out of it. I've had people say to me, ah, oh, that's just foolishness, just saying the scriptures over and over and over. That, that just puts me in bondage. No, it causes faith to come. Why does confession work? Because, first of all, it causes faith to come. It renews your mind to the Word of God. And when you get your mind renewed to the Word of God by saying what God said long enough, you go to thinking like God thinks. Now, there's four uh, audio cassettes in this album. It's number 2413, offer number 2413. Why Confession Works, four audio cassettes in an album for $24 plus $5 postage and handling. Now, this will give you uh, an overall view of why you confess the Word of God. Uh, if you don't understand why you do th things, people will talk you out of it. I've had people say, well, no, that's just foolishness, you know, to say those things over and over. But Paul said, the word is nigh you. It is in your mouth, then it's in your heart. First, it's in your mouth. Why? Because what you speak goes right down into the human spirit. When I went to school, we uh, quoted the multiplication tables over and over until we knew them by heart. That's how you get the word in your heart by confessing the Word of God. God said, call me to remembrance of what I said. Well, did he forget? No, he didn't forget. The reason he said, call me to remembrance, he knew you'd have to tell him what he said about you in the Word. In other words, the promises of God. If you will confess the promises of God, it'll create that image in you, and you'll live out the reality of it. This four-tape series will give you an understanding of how and why confession works and to put it work in your life. Four audio cassettes in an album for $24 plus $5 posted in the hand. We'll have a toll-free order line, 1-877-396-9400. Until next time, this is Charles Capps reminding you, Jesus is coming soon. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.